Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So yeah, I'm uh, gonna talk about repairing a motor mover remote control. Um, yeah, we were away uh, last weekend. Uh, everything was fine, right up to the point where we're just about to connect the caravan up to the van. And um, yeah, the motor mover would not come to life. Uh, tried the power button, just wouldn't light up. Tried changing the batteries. Again, no issues with the batteries because I know they were come from a brand new packet. So yeah, something was certainly not right. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna sort of go through exactly what I've done to actually get this back to fully working again. And hopefully you'll find this video beneficial maybe in the future. Um, but um, yeah, we'll get cracking. So when we left site or were trying to leave site, I tried to use the motor mover and found out it was completely dead. Um, tried changing the batteries, but at the time I only changed them recently for new ones. So I, I, in hope, I thought it, it might work, but it obviously in my mind, I thought, yeah, I, I wasn't that hopeful. Um, when we first turned up to the site also it was raining and it was late in the evening. So this must have got slightly damp. Um, what I wasn't aware of is that actually it's, um, isn't waterproof well I thought it may be to a certain extent but um, clearly not um, so yeah if you if you have these that you be very careful in terms of how well they do actually get um, it seems to seep underneath the sticker um, and then onto the electrics um, and then obviously sh making a short or damaging one of the circuits um, so now I've got it home and yeah, I thought I'd make this video just so you're aware of obviously potentially how yours comes apart if it's similar to this. Um, the mistake I made was I took the screw apart thinking I could then prise this off. Um, and I did get this off only to find actually how it should have come apart was the sticker that comes here. You're supposed to prise that up and then you get, it gives you access to the four screws which would then have dropped this out of the way. Um, and then once I, I could see that, I could see the board um, and on the board, I did have some, look like where some water had got onto some corrosion. Um, and the same with at the top here. So all I've done here is um, taken it apart. I, oh, for myself, I had some PCB cleaner, um, which, you can use a cotton bud, um, dip it in and wipe it all down just to get rid of any sort of discolouring. Just so again, it's it's just cleaning it up. It's not making a, a short anywhere. Um, once you've done that and cleaned it up, obviously let it dry. This will evaporate anyway once it's um, after a few minutes um, anyway. Um, and what you're able to do is just sort of put this back in um, and to test whether where your issue is again if it's battery related you can obviously put the batteries back in and then using a multimeter again you can come across the points um, either side and seeing if you're getting the voltage that you would expect from the three batteries into the unit at least that way you're able to eliminate whether it's if it's a power problem or if it's actually a blown circuit um, and again like i say you would normally just run the multimeter off the top two um, positive and negative and then that will give you a reading as long as you're reading it from the top then it's making a circuit through and then that way you know that side of things is working um, and luckily for us, it wasn't that, it was just the water on the circuit here. So like I said, I cleaned it all up. And once I'd done that, I put some batteries back in, it did kick back into life. Um, so this is more of a case of, yeah, if you've got any issues that it's completely dead, not responding, I'd say the first, the easiest one is always take a case of getting a voltage here and seeing if that looks correct. Um, and obviously swapping the batteries out, that's, that's your, your basic steps for that um, and then when it comes to taking it apart like I say just go easy on how that that works like I said for us it was battery here it would have been obviously taken off the sticker and then getting access to it um, 
so yeah, lessons learned. I've I've broken one of the tabs, um, but luckily enough, it should be straightforward just to glue that back on where it's broken from. Um, it's still got three good points, uh, and then we should be good. Um, but other than that, like I say, it's just some basic um, electronic sort of techniques to use. And like I say, it's just looking at the voltage and then just looking at the board itself and just seeing if there's any corrosion on there. And like I say, you can just get a cotton bud, get that with some PCB cleaner, not water, obviously, because that will damage it further. Um, and once it's on there, you can just run it around just where you think it doesn't quite look uh, right in terms of the colour to the rest of the board. Um, and hopefully, once it's all dry, dried out, depending on if 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 it was actually wet, um, which may have caused your issue, which is what ours was, again, once it's dried, hopefully it'll come back to life um, and you don't have to buy a replacement. Um, but yeah, just, just make sure it's dried out, put it on top of a radiator, stick it in some rice or something like that, just something to absorb the water if that's the kind of damage you've got. If not, and you're quite good with electronics, what you can do and, and get a fine point is actually sort of start testing, putting a, a, a positive negative on these just to see if you've got a circuit. Put a, um, uh, one of those continuity tests on it. So when you've got the, the beeping, and again, you can go across some of these just to see where they are. Can't do it with one hand at a turn like that. Um, but yeah, you'd, you'd bridge across the gaps just to see if you've got a, uh, a connection. And if you have, again, you'll, you'll get that beeping sound. But that might be a bit too much. But ideally, like I said, just check the uh, voltage first. Change the batteries, then check the voltage. See if you've got that part, that part first. If not, then you can look to see what other damage is actually on the board. But um, hopefully, like you say, this will just be something to guide you and hopefully it, it may have to save you to sort of spend out for a replacement. And I think these are quite expensive normally. This is an old, a really old model, but uh, from what I can see, these are sort of like well over a hundred pounds. So it's definitely worth sort of taking them apart and just having a look at these prior to sort of um, doing anything else. But um, yeah, hopefully if you have a problem, hopefully this has helped slightly um, and pointed you in the right direction. So all I'm going to do now is slowly put this back together. I've got to fix this bit first by gluing it. Then I can turn it around, put it in, screw it in. Get this back on top as well. Um, and then, yeah, I'll finish off by just replacing the sticker over the top and then uh, it should be good to go again. But um, yeah, like I say, this is what they look like inside. Very basic, not a lot to them. Um, but yeah, give it a clean. But so um, yeah, any questions, just drop a, a, a message below and I'll, I'll try and help best I can. So this bit's been glued. Um, so hopefully we can put this back together and see how we get on. Hopefully it still functions. There is, um, certainly on this one, there's a little ridge there for the plus and plus to go into, and then it seats neatly there. So now it's just a case of making sure this goes back in. Obviously, you can see visually whether you're going to have connections there. Um, yeah, let's, let's get some screws in and see what it does.
Don't want to go too mad with the screws in terms of threading. And, and just make sure you've got a, a, a nice little set as well. Don't try and get a screwdriver out the drawer that actually isn't sort of the right size to start with, because all you're going to do is thread the, the screw and cause yourself another problem on top of it. So you can probably get one of these sets, something like from B&M, something like that. Doesn't need to be a really expensive, um, but it just needs to have a. Uh, a number of different sizes at the end just so it's, it's the right size um so yeah so that's that's the main bit back that's you can see how it basically comes apart just your four screws and again when you when you're cleaning make sure you do both sides here's the actual pad here's underneath here's the the connections it uses when it touches this pad Try not to clean this, just be careful when you take it off. Like you say, use something like um, a standing knife blade, something that's very fine just to get the corners up. That way, you're not going to try and use something like a screwdriver to gouge it. You get this off nice and cleanly. But again, try not to clean this too much because you'll, you'll lose the stickiness, which will be another problem within itself. Then it should just be a case of lining it back up bit like putting um, a screen on top of a phone just work it one way slowly just bring your finger down over it don't push it down too hard to start with test it because you might be taking it apart again um, so yeah so just go easy on that front and you should just be able to hopefully turn it on and for us we were lucky and it's working so yeah now I know it's working get the back on push it down go easy because it is a circuit board underneath and then that should be it but like I say now now obviously in hindsight I can see there is a gap there going around so if any water had got in it would have just naturally sort of gone in, seeped around, and then come along towards them and meet the board. So, yeah, they're not they're not waterproof in any shape or form. So, yeah, if you're caught in a storm, then I would say stick a bag over it or something along those lines. If you're in the rain and you're having to take it off or put it on a site, but um, yeah, hopefully this has been useful to you. Um, and like I said, any questions, just drop it in the comments below. Cheers. On. So hopefully this week's video has been useful. Obviously we've covered a few points. One is around actually taking the remote control apart. Uh, the second one is obviously replacing the batteries. The third one is obviously uh, testing the voltage with a multimeter. And the fourth one is obviously cleaning the board itself and how to do that. Um, so hopefully one of these steps would sort of get to the stage where that sort of eliminate the problem that you have. Um, so yeah, any questions, put them in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed the video, as always, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers all.